In this lesson, we're going to talk about route groups and why you would want to use them in your app router. As we learned in the previous lesson, anytime that we create a new folder inside of our app folder, it is going to create a new URL segment inside of our domain or URL path. So we had the about mapping to the about segment. We had the team. This is from our example previously, which was nested inside of the about. Uh, which then created this team segment. Now you can prevent this mapping by marking this folder as a route group. Therefore, that folder would be opt out of your segment and it's not going to actually be mapped or affect your URL. Now this would allow you to organize your project files and route segments into logical groups. For example, you have all the routes uh, for your marketing stuff in one group or in one folder. You would have everything that belongs to shop or maybe authentications uh, in different groups. So the first use case is just organizing the routes inside the app folder in different groups. Now, how would you create a route group or how would you mark a folder as a route group? You would just have to wrap the name of that folder in parentheses. Now, as you realize, this is the example that we had. We had a nested route of team inside of the about. Now we're going to reorganize this in this uh, lesson by creating a new folder called company. And we are wrapping this with parentheses. So we're marking this as a route group and putting the about and team actually side by side as sibling pages inside of this route group. Now, as I mentioned this, uh, when you mark a folder as a route group, uh, you, you're going to take it out of the router or you're going to opt it out of being mapped to specific segments in your URL. So as you can see, this company doesn't affect our URL. It's actually pointing to the same root of my app, which is affected by our app, the page and layout inside of our app. And this about page now inside of this route group is going to be then directly mapped to forward slash about segment inside of our URL. Now team is no longer nested inside of the about. It's just we brought it out as a sibling inside of this route group. And now it's going to be mapped to forward slash team as its own segment. So as you can see, this route group does not affect our URL path. And it really doesn't matter what you name this because it's not affecting any segment. It's just at this point for organization purposes. So I'm going to put all the pages that's about the company that this website belongs to, like the about page, the team page, the contact us page, the careers page. I can just organize all of those pages inside of this route group. Now I can have another route group for, again, authentications. So I can put in my sign in, sign out error pages for auth inside of that route group and organize my routes and project files inside of the app router. Now, the other use case that we're going to see together is that you can actually share layout between these route groups. So if I bring in this layout file that I have over here and put it at the same level as these other files, what we have done here is we've created the layout inside of a route group. And by doing that, we're opting all of these pages that are inside of this route group to this layout. So that's the second use case for route groups. You can opt in different pages in and out of layouts without affecting the URL. Now, that's the important part because you could opt pages in and out of layouts by creating different segments and those segments or those folders are going to affect the URL. But with route groups, you can opt in any page that you have. Let's say we have a contact page that's currently living inside of the app out of this route group. But I want to bring that contact page to also use this layout. All I need to do is to bring it inside this route group. This is going to make that contact page actually share and use this layout, but it does not affect the URL you'd still access that contact page at forward slash contact because when inside of this route group, 
this route group does not affect the URL. So I want to emphasize that the point here is to create a nested layout without affecting the URL. Now, similar to this same concept, you can create two different layouts. So if you have you know, different route groups inside your application and you want to have entirely different root layouts, so the outermost root layout that you have inside the app, you want it to be different between different route groups. You can do that too. All you need to do is to delete that outermost root layout that you have from inside the app and put root layouts inside of your route groups. Then you have to create multiple root layouts, one for the company, maybe one for the auth pages and whatnot. Now that's a less common use case, but with the use of route groups, you now know that you can create different root layouts. Let's now jump into the code and actually put this into action. So inside of our project, up until this point, as you remember, we had this about page. Inside of it, we nested the team page. And inside of this about, we had this layout, which was affecting the about page. And also the team page, which is nested inside of the layout. Now, if I go to our application here, all I did over here is to just create this nice border or about layout over here. So we can visualize what's happening. So as you can see, this is about for a slash team. It is sharing this about layout. And if I go to the about page itself, this text changes, which is the actual page for the about. If I go to the about page, it's just rendering the about. And this about layout is this layout that we have that lives inside of the about. And again, as a refresher, it was just a section over here that's now rendering this about on the border. And then we have this children prop because you do need to have a children prop inside of your layouts. And that's actually where the children layouts and the child pages are going to be plugged in. Okay, now let's turn this into uh, the concept that we just saw together. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to name this company and I'm going to wrap the name with parentheses. So I create a route group which is now opted out of our, my URL segment. So I'm going to bring in this team inside of this company. I'm going to also bring in this layout inside of the company. And I'm going to also bring in the about directly inside of the company. So let's just see what happened here. I have now this company route group. I have the about page with the page inside of it. I have the team segment with the page inside of it. And I have this layout, which is directly underneath this company route group, which then allows these two pages to share this layout. The layout is the same layout or about layout or company layout. Maybe we can rename this to now company layout. So it's shared between all the pages that somehow relate to our company. We have a contact page over here. So let's just bring in that company into uh, our company route group now. Again, the contact segment with a page over here. Now going back to our application, nothing should change. We still are accessing the about page with that same about layout. And if I now go ahead and access the team page, just remember the team is no longer nested inside the about. It's just living at the root. If I go back, now the team inside of this company route group is living at four slash team. It's no longer nested inside the about. So we're going to go for slash team. We're still sharing this about layout. And then we have this team over here too. Maybe I can change the name here to be company layout as well. So we can see this company layout is shared now. If I now also go to my contact page, I should also see this company layout, which is the outermost layout that's now shared between all of the pages and segments that live inside of this route group. And then the contact page is just the child page that's plugged into this layout. Now, to make this a bit fancier, I have created a new component. Let me just refresh the page. So I'm bringing in a side navigation over to this company layout. As you can see here, this is going to be shared with any page that's inside this route group. We have this side navigation. We can go to the about. And this is the segment on the right hand side is going to be the actual page about going to go to the team page, going to go to the contact page, as you can see, 
These segments on the right hand side are individually controlled by these pages. For example, in the about, we're just showing about, the contact, we're just showing the contact. Now the left hand side navigation or section is coming from our shared layout, which is inside of our route groups, which is again shared between all the pages that live inside of this route group. We have this navigation over here. And then down in the bottom, we're just plugging in the different pages that we get inside of this main tag so they can all share this same layout. Now, as you can see, layouts are a native feature that comes very easy inside the app router. Now, if we wanted to create something similar in the Next.js 12 or in the Pages router, it was possible, but you would have had to compose so many different components to be able to create such a thing. But the most important benefit in the app router is not even how easy it is to create layouts or that it's a native feature. But what's important here, as I mentioned in the previous lessons, is that now when you are navigating between different pages that now share this layout, the actual thing that's going to be re-rendered is this page. So that header, which is your root layout, or this shared layout inside your route group is not going to be refetched. It's not going to be re-rendered. The actual segment of your page that's changing is going to be re-rendered. And even for these segments that do change, the router is going to try to do a soft navigation. So it's going to look inside the client side cache to see if this link was prefetched or if it was visited before. And if so, it's going to use that uh, payload from the cache instead of going back to the server. Because at the end of the day, all of these components and pages are React server components and React server components only run and render on the server which means if this partial rendering wasn't happening, on every page navigation, we would have to go back to the server, render our pages, layouts, and components, and then bring the HTML back here. But with the use of this new router, the client-side cache, we are able to do a soft navigation. We are able to restore the result of our React server component in client-side. So anytime that we are navigating, instead of going back to the server, we're just going to use that cache, which makes this transition near instant between these different pages, which are all server components and are supposed to be rendered on the server. They are rendered on the server, but because we're using links over here and the links are visible inside the viewport, uh, these routes are prefetched in the background before we actually visit them. So once we click on them, it's just a near instant transition. Now, other than organizing our pages and segments inside of logical groups or folders, I want to emphasize that you can opt pages in and out of layouts by just bringing them inside a route group or not. So for example, this contact page before was outside. You could still access it from forward slash contact, but by bringing it into this route group, it's now sharing this layout that's shared between this specific route group. That's a wrap for this lesson, folks. We covered route groups and how you can use them to organize your projects, segments, and files, or create nested layouts or shared layouts without affecting the URL. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about suspense, loading UI, error boundaries, and more. So see you in the next lesson.